Okay, hi guys, my name is Shannon Beveridge. Welcome back to X's and O's, a podcast where we talk about queer relationships and sex. Oh my god. Uh, oh my god, you guys. <laughs> How are we doing? I'm doing good. I'm stressed. <laughs> Mental health check-in for uh, March 19th, 2024. I'm stressed, but I'm also really excited um you obviously know who the guest is on this podcast episode i am so happy that i get to clear the air a little bit and have this conversation obviously it's controversial it's a controversial decision maybe maybe you think it is uh yeah it's definitely people are you guys are going to talk about it a little bit so yeah i'm i think being perceived by this many people at the same time is inherently scary i think it would be scary if i wasn't scared at all so yeah don't worry i'm a little scared i am a little scared okay i'm gonna keep the intro pretty short but i do want to say thank you to the sponsor of this episode tomboy x i love you guys so much i love this company i love supporting queer businesses and yeah you'll hear more about why i love the company throughout this episode but thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you to tomboy x for sponsoring the video I also have really exciting news in that I am launching my Patreon today. So if you're watching this, uh, yeah, I have a Patreon now. It will be in the link in the bio also. And there is bonus content from this episode on there now if you want to go over there and check it out. We did, in fact, rank the songs that Carrie has written about me. So if that's of interest to you, it's live right now on Patreon link is in the bio if you are yeah watching so hi yeah go sign up for it if you want and there will be exclusive uh access to merch and stuff early on there that's the other perk uh yeah and there will always be from here on out every episode of the podcast there will be extra content extra few minutes few minutes like 10 15 minutes uh at least every episode on there for you if you uh, subscribe to my patreon so come be a part of it i i'm it's new to me i've never done it before and i don't know what all will be on there but right now that's that's the plan that's the goal and yeah there's already content there so join it join me (laughs) okay before this episode starts i think i just want to say one last thing and that is that (laughs) i think a lot of people joined this storyline uh kind of like at this height of drama there was some drama that happened and i hope that this episode today can just be uh a reminder that we are both people we're real real people who like really really dated each other and really had a real relationship and there were like years years before um some of that stuff happened and I just wanted to like set a foundation for those people who did join late and only got the drama so you can just see and be reminded like oh my god these people are real people who really dated for four years like and then all the stuff that happened after we're gonna talk about all of it or we talk about we really talk about it um I think it's really easy for people to become characters like just fictional characters in your life and just like the drama is the story but in reality like we are real people we're real real people and I guess I don't know I I don't know if I'm successful at it I don't know if we're successful at it in this episode but that is what I really 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 hope is the takeaway I hope that you watch this and you are reminded like oh my god yeah wait they're humans they're people they're not characters things happened and they were sensationalized and they were dramatic and they uh, were f- probably fun for you to watch. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I just hope this episode can like humanize us and uh, our relationship and like remind everyone like before everything happened, there was like a lot, a lot, a lot that happened. Years happened. So and we're going to get into those years. So, yeah, enjoy this episode. And yeah, thanks again, Tomboy X. And check out my Patreon and yeah potentially you might see merch on there soon 
Enjoy. I'm scared. I'm nervous. Uh... Is this the craziest thing that you have ever done? Is this the craziest thing I've ever done? Yeah. Most crazy things I've done have been with you, for sure. Okay. Well, hello, world. Hello. Are you nervous? Are you excited? It's going to be fun. Yeah. I'm feeling a lot of things. I'm Let's feeling... talk about that. Yeah. How are you... Well, how should we start this? I know. I have to do, I have to do an intro. <laughs> okay. Should we take a deep breath? Yeah. Can we take a deep breath yeah. collectively? Mm-hmm. <sighs> okay. What is our intention here? What is your intention? <laughs> What's your intention? Why are we here? Um, mm-hmm. I have an intention of us just being able to clear things clear. and also clear the air and reconnect and share with people where we've been and just kind of deep dive into everything that's happened over the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Easy. <laughs> Gulp. <laughs> Real smooth, <laughs> real simple. Should be easy. Should be an easy task. Should be easy. We can really do it all I have a, right I have, a, I have a sage candle back here. Oh my god! I feel like we need to. It? Yeah, I feel like we got to keep the the vibes, the, en- the energy flowing. You do it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hi guys. My name is Shannon Beverage. Welcome back to X's and O's, a podcast where we talk about queer relationships and sex. And today I have. Oh, highly, 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 highly requested guest. Uh, you may know her as the pop singer and sensation Fletcher. I know her as Carrie Fletcher, my ex girlfriend. And yay, how'd I do? <laughs> <laughs> She's here. <laughs> wow. Um, I, I cannot believe we're doing this. No. Nope. I've been practicing this moment, but I never thought oh my see God. It again. No, but actually this it feels very crazy. That it we feels are very crazy. Sitting here doing this right now. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. But we're doing it. We're doing it. You guys asked and we are actually delivering, which I'm sure they're like shocked, but also it's crazy. We've never we have never like really sat down and talked. Like ever really no. online. Like no people and- don't remember that our relationship was private. Yeah, and then we only shared it really when we were breaking up mm-hmm. at the very end. And still then we never like publicly talked about our relationship ever. No, this feels like our we would go on Instagram lives like occasionally yeah. every once in a while, but this is I feel like this is our first time sitting down having like an in depth and piece being, of yeah. content and having a conversation and people seeing us interact which is so crazy because so much time has passed and so much has happened so we've lived like a million lives literally yeah so much has happened yeah and it's the first time we we're being honest because i feel like those other times even when we do the instagram lives obviously we were honest we were being ourselves but it was like just like tiptoeing around the fact that everyone knew we were dating and we just were like yeah my friend carrie why did we never do that well why did we never say we were dating <laughs> we were dating for four years <clears throat> that's a great question let's just jump right into it shout out to tomboy x for sponsoring this entire episode if you don't know them tomboy x creates sustainable size and gender inclusive loungewear underwear and swimwear they make everything from bikinis briefs boy shorts compression tops, underwear for packing and tucking, and more. And the best part is they run from 3XS to 6X. The tank top I'm wearing today is from Tomboy X, and my favorite thing about it is that it has built-in support, which means I don't have to wear a bra, and that is honestly the best thing in the world to me. And it's really cute, and it's really comfortable. Supporting them helps support my podcast, so go to www.tomboyx.com slash Shannon for 20% off the entire website. Let's just so, go let's just go right there. Let's go 0 to 100. I think it's funny. There's so many misconceptions about our relationship in general online, like 8 million misconceptions, and this is definitely one of them, is that people thought I wanted our relationship to be private. Mm-hmm. Because I had just gotten out of a really public public relationship. But the reality of the situation is we talked about it together. It was like a decision we made together. Mm-hmm. 
But then during COVID, when we were quarantined together, as ex-girlfriends do. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Truly, something's not right there, but <laughs> we couple, did it. A couple screws loose upstairs. <laughs> Why Truly, did, a, cra- why a, cra- did we a crazy do that? that was a that was a crazy decision that we chose to quarantine together wild. while we were while we were broken not up together. I think people don't believe it. It's like, but I'm like, no, we really were not together. Well, because I was supposed to go on tour. Yeah, and we had broken up before I went on tour, and then the whole world shut down, and and it was our birthday, and it was our birthday, and then I was like, let's just we were like, let's, let's just spend our birthdays together, and then we did, and then we ended up. The world shut, living together yeah, for like six in Florida for like six months. Yeah, that was really crazy. We're gonna get into that. We're gonna get into that. <laughs> but let's circle back to okay. what happened was when we were quarantined together, we had been on and off and on and off and on and off a few times, mm-hmm. and then we were quarantined together, and then we were like, "How are we ever going to? How are we ever gonna like, let the internet know like we're broken up because we never told them we were together?" And then we were like, remember we were sitting on that hammock at E Roses and I was like, we never revisited why we were keeping our relationship completely private. Like, should we talk about it? Mm-hmm. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Well, I also, th- I mean, I think it was, there was a lot of reasons there. I think it was the fact that you you had come from such a public relationship and then I think we wanted to just keep things between you and I and keep it for us. Mm-hmm. And yeah I don't know I think it was also just there was like it's overwhelming to have to have people like know about your personal life in that way yet then we just went and fully put it all on blast at the end at the end which was really which just like followed us for like years yeah because we also gave no clarity about that Mm -hmm. either it was just like here you go guys and yeah weird decision making skills we've got but beautiful art yeah, I was gonna say, do you do you regret the sex tapes? Yeah. So if you guys don't know about the sex tapes, we should. Be, I realize I don't give context enough in my right, right. So I'm her ex girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> this is my ex girlfriend. I'm a singer. singer. <laughs> my is name. Singer. She is. She, she is, is singer. singer. She is. <laughs> she multi hyphen she she lesbian. <laughs> she is singer. Um, she, she is, is lesbian. <laughs> she is lesbian. And we make art we make art together and so we uh i'm a singer and i made (laughs) i made an ep i wrote an ep and it was called the sex tapes and uh it was shot all the music videos and creative and photos were all shot and directed by my ex shannon beverage lesbian lesbian (laughs) and yeah we were quarantined together and she shot all the music videos and then we released them and it was incredible like it was like the most it was like one of my favorite projects it was like my favorite project I've ever made and we worked so well together Mm -hmm. and it was so but it was also really hard because I was performing these songs that I had written about us being on and off and on and off and on and off Mm -hmm. um in our throughout our relationship yeah and I hadn't heard two of them and you hadn't heard two of them and yeah and those were like hard to play because it was about like at one point with other people what, when we were broken up and like hooking like hooking up with other people mm-hmm. which was which in just in retrospect is just like we went through so much with that and i also just feel like i was just really immature like i felt like i was really really immature and really energetically irresponsible with my emotions with your emotions um yeah there's just like a lot there's i i don't have I don't have regret for that EP and us making that together, but I will say the, the, the choice to like share it all was definitely a choice. (laughs) Choices that I would maybe, yeah, yeah, that I would like, as you know, the the years have gone by, I would totally probably approach it differently. We could have done that a lot differently, even like privately, the way we handled it with each other was, I don't think that responsible. It was kind of like, we went we went full like no contact basically when it came out almost and then it yeah. was just like yeah our breakup yeah our breakup but it was like it, yeah it was like oh it was a hard cold turkey there was no celebration of that ep Mm-mm. there was no communication about it Mm-mm. you were dating someone else yeah that was stressful all of that was stressful yeah. and i was like 
Yeah, that was just, it was a lot, but it was like so fun. But I was thinking about it. It was wild. Like at the beginning, it started so positive and it was like, okay, we have nothing to do. It's COVID. Yeah, let's like, what are we going to do? Like, let's make these videos and they were fun and they were whatever. And it took like months. And then by like the last few videos, we were like falling apart at the seams. Yeah, like, the miserable. feel video. The one that will literally never see the light of day. Miserable. And on, and the girl who edited that video, months later, I worked with her on a different project. And I was like, did you like listen to yeah, we us were, we were in arguing. that video? Because I was recording audio every time I was using the camera. Yeah. We were arguing the whole time not nicely either and then no. there was a, a scene where we were trying to get you to cry and we were like should we just record and like have a combo and it that what you remember it no. it was also like not I good i like blocked that out and you didn't even cry <laughs> <laughs> it's okay I did we just plenty tortured of, I did, ourselves I did for what plenty of crying yeah i did plenty of crying after it same why why do you feel like this is my podcast now by the yeah, way i love it thank you <laughs> Thanks for having me here. You're so welcome. In my room. Yeah. Also, the fact that we are in your, mm-hmm. we are in your bedroom, mm-hmm. and you like still have a few things that you've had <laughs> when we were dating. Some things never change. Some things never change. Yeah. Is this the same? Is this your same mattress? Unfortunately, I need to get a new Shannon, one. I don't even think that that's to. like good for my <laughs> that's back. It's not healthy. I'm getting for, a, this. We're getting. A, I brought a little sage yeah, spray. Can you we gotta like. Help me. Wow. Let's, yeah, I need guys, a new let's mattress. Start, let's, let's collectively. Can we start a GoFundMe? <laughs> I was going to say, can we start a GoFundMe <laughs> Go to get this fucking girl a, a new, new mattress? mattress? Okay, I'm embarrassed now. <clears throat> okay. Anyway, what were you going to ask me? Um, Why do you feel like we ultimately broke up? Uh, Ultimately? There's, I mean, which time? I mean, ultimately, you mean like the very end? Yeah. Well, I feel like. Do you want to talk about this? <laughs> okay. we can and then we can maybe cut it out okay <laughs> i feel like i had a lot of like empathy for how you were feeling when we first started to break up mm-hmm. because we were really young and i think you felt like you were you hadn't experienced enough life like alone or like with other people mm-hmm. and i had a similar experience with my first relationship where I was like wow, I don't know what it's like. I'm very codependent with her and I was never out as a lesbian single. So like when you were going through that experience, I was like, I don't, I can't be selfish about this. Like I know that feeling and I know you're not coming from, you weren't doing it to be mean to me Mm -hmm. or to hurt me, but you just like needed to have those life experiences. But the problem was I kept trying to be like, okay, go away, go Mm -hmm. do it. And then you would go away for like a second a few months or a month or three weeks and then you'd be like i miss you and then mm, it was just yeah. like a cycle of us being like break up get back together break up get back together hook up with other people get back together i hook up with someone you find out every person i hooked up with every single person i had some i could not i, I could not you, you couldn't get away with anything it wasn't even it was like the weirdest ways i was getting caught yeah you got caught on video one time somebody filmed you literally yelled at me across the bar i'm like in an open relationship i think at that point or we were broken up i don't even know which is true anymore because yeah. timelines are blurry anyway i kiss someone on a dance floor i hear someone from across the bar yell now this is living and i was like oh my god we gotta go and then that person dm'd the video to every person i followed on instagram oh. pretty much I was like, nice. That's so not fair. And it was so bizarre because in so many ways, no shade to you, you were the one who wanted to go out and experience new things. And I was kind of in that like classic, like your partner suggests an open relationship scenario and you're like, well, if you're going to do it, I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. So I would like, we even at one point it was like, yeah, we were the irony was that I was also in that, in that time. It was not, you were and I wasn't. <laughs> Okay, that's not completely true. I don't know. All the timelines are a little <laughs> hairy. Yeah. It doesn't matter, obviously. It's like cement. Oh, this is not important. But I think that's like, that is what started to happen. And then it just, uh, it got to a point where it was obvious. It's like, okay, this is, now we're just in a toxic cycle. And yeah. I genuinely wanted you to go live your life and have mm-hmm. those experiences. And I am curious, like, what would have happened if COVID didn't happen? 
Because I feel like COVID helped us like really nail that coffin shut. Going back to us, why it ultimately ended, I think I just, I like was not, I was not equipped to be in a relationship. Yeah. Like, and, and, and I think, and you were so gracious with me. I'm just like, I understand. I see you. I get it. And then I would go and then I'd be like, well, what am I doing? Like I have this incredible human being and yeah, it was just, I was, it was irresponsible with your heart, with my heart and we're just like we were young I think we were young. We were just young I mean I was a part of the problem too because I there's a lot of times when I look back where I'm like I should have just said no just been like okay you have to like set boundaries just, yeah I can I am boundaryless I'm trying to learn how <laughs> how's that going I'm still learning <laughs> uh, every day it's a new day <laughs> okay Carrie hit her head on my shelf oh Be god careful. it's getting weird up here um yeah, I mean, it took two of two people to make that happen. I think if I was older or more mature and able to set boundaries, when that first started coming up, I would have been like, go forth and prosper, yeah. girl. Yeah. And instead I was like, it also created such a weird, like avoid and anxious thing between us where we, and we were flipping back and forth with each other. The constantly. whole time, the whole time like, you would pull away and then I would run towards you and then you would run towards me and I would pull, pull away. It. And it was just this, this dynamic that was, yeah, it was really, it was intense, it was, yeah. but also like what the times that were good, like we're so, we're, we're so good. It was great. Like when we, in, <laughs> at the beginning, at the beginning, <laughs> like the wasted, wasted youth era oh and like my gosh, the music can we, can video. Can we talk about wasted youth? Yeah, let's talk about wasted youth. Uh, if you wait, guys... can wait, let's also, can we talk about, can we talk about, should we talk about how we met? Let's do it. So I had followed you on Instagram mm-hmm. for a, a long time and I had an internet crush on you. And I, we had a mutual friend, mm-hmm. Courtney, and I was out in LA visiting and she was like, um, she was like, I'm going bowling tonight with my friend Shannon and I canceled all my plans. And I yep. was like, I'm coming. Mm-hmm. And then, and then I almost canceled. And then you almost canceled cause you were supposed to be somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And then I get to the bowling alley and I was so nervous. <laughs> my heart was beating out of my chest at the, at the Bolero. Bolero. And um yeah and then we started we met we met there and then we went out to Davy Wayne we went out to Davy Wayne's yep and then I followed I was like what's your Instagram Remember yeah, that? yeah yeah you were like what's your Instagram and I was like and I didn't want to tell you it because I had already fought fo- I was already following you mm-hmm. and I didn't want to seem like I was like a fangirl and it was before I think it said follow back even, but I typed in my Instagram on yours or something, but I, it became apparent that you already followed me. And I was like, oh, so nice. You're like, you already followed me? I was like, fuck. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, had, I had already followed you. And then we kissed on the day we met, on the night we met. Crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Love. We also, were babies. Also, do you remember when we were outside Davy Wayne's and you jumped up and you and hit a, a tree and a rat <laughs> fell out of the tree? That felt, that felt like the first bad omen. <laughs> oh my a god! Rat, I a forgot. Rat, a rat fully fell out of first a tree. First of all, what was I doing jumping like that? It's like, <laughs> like you're trying to be I cool. Was literally like, <laughs> like, I you can think, jump yeah, high. Why like, do I? Do, I think I still do that. By the way. <laughs> Actually, I know. I've been told. I recently jumped at tenants, like jumped over a barrier to, <laughs> to try to I impress like, a girl. And yeah, she was like, that not, was weird. It's not like, that impressive. That's, yeah. I got to, like, I should have cut that out years ago. You're like, look how high I could jump. No, the rat, the rat felt like the first bad omen. The rat was the first bad omen. We should have thought more about that. But also not bad omen. I feel like everything that was meant to happen, great things happened. Yeah, we had a great relationship. Okay, so then Wasted Youth. Wasted Youth. Happened really quickly after that, basically. Quickly. Because yeah. I was like, oh, I need to be single. And I was like excited to be single. And then I met you and then I was like, fuck. Like, but you lived in New York still. So I was like, oh, I'll just wait till like she moves to LA. And then we just talked all the time. And then you came to LA for something. We were at Dockweller Beach. We were drinking and like literally just with friends. And our friend Ryan pulled out his camera mm-hmm. started filming us mm-hmm. and 
we like i almost drowned in the ocean but <laughs> we were because <laughs> yeah, we were drunk we were drunk and it was <laughs> and why was the water so randomly warm it was so warm weirdest feeling ever the w- water was warm ryan shoots all of these clips and then he was like you guys this might be crazy but i feel like that could be like the beginning of a music video like that could be in like wasted youth or whatever and then that's how we ended up filming that music video and like everything else after that oh talk about trees you fell out of one what when we were filming the video yes you remember you I fell, fell out, out of the tree, the tree? what when tree we climbed the tree and you fell out of the tree <laughs> <laughs> you're the rat <laughs> I am oh the rat. God, you were the rat. <laughs> oh no. Oh my god. You, do you remember that? There's video, but like you can't see oh, it. Oh, and then I was all scr- and I yes, was you all fell out of up. the tree. Yeah. 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 It, it made like, a sound <laughs> when you did it. <laughs> you like feel like I'm gonna bl- black that out too. <laughs> anyway, that but, video <clears throat> but then that video ended up being such a weird that was weird decision making. Every video we've made is weird. <laughs> We'll see what happens here. <laughs> yeah, this might not we be one of our stop finer ideas. Recording ourselves. Anyway, <laughs> we also have no plan for this. No, no. We just were like, we're just gonna let's talk. Let's just sit down and see what flows and it's, see what the conversation. Yeah, we're flowing. We're flowing. It's going. It's going. Are we doing okay? <laughs> ten out of ten. How would you rate this? Yeah. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> hey 10 out of 10 how would you rate this yet (laughs) (laughs) is that how youtube works 10 out of 10 okay can we talk about the fact that you're drinking Mm. a beer Mm -hmm. and you're drinking a coconut water i was gonna say maybe we shouldn't tell people what it is it feels lame the coconut water yeah i think it's really obvious i don't really drink these days that's okay yeah but i did say that i would do the game a drink a drink, a drink, a drink. i don't know if you should drink i don't know if you should a, a, a drink, a drink or or tr- <laughs> you would think i'm the one you're the one drinking it's me i'm drinking a beer why are you why is this so funny i feel like you got funnier thank you so much <laughs> thank you so much maybe you just forgot because we haven't talked in three years Correct. which we will get to wait can we finish wasted youth yes yes let i just want to say it was crazy because then we we made that video and that basically did confirm to the internet we were dating right but and then, then we were like, we were like, like just like, don't kidding don't tell anyone we're dating don't tell anyone but we're gonna have but just this video of us started. falling in love literally like it's like so real that video is like it's so real just truly just us like real. fully obsessed with each other yeah and then and then we were like and never telling them anything about us again it yeah. was a very weird decision that we made and i don't know if you want to talk about this but it was kind of how you came out mm-hmm. publicly like as it was fletcher it was yeah. my how it, was that for you it was my first time ever sharing um like anything about my sexuality and mm-hmm. being queer and it was really scary that was in like 2016 and um yeah i had like come out to my family and and then didn't come out to be like that was just my sort of like hey I like women <laughs> um and but it was also it was like it was it was the most beautiful time of my entire life also like getting to share that piece of me felt like so much freedom and you were such a big part of that like you were such a big part of that and what I think is so beautiful is that you've been such a big part of that for so many people That's like you nice. are so loved and when people think about their I, I even remember following you and feeling that freedom like through you and you sharing your story and your life and I just was always like yeah cried like crushed on you for a long time before I even met you and so I think I think there is a squirrel on my roof <laughs> It might be a rat. I think there is a squirrel in your roof. Please be a fucking squirrel. No more rats, please. What is this, the spiritual meaning of a rat? I feel like it can't be good. Whole, yeah, I can't. I be. think it was. It might have been an omen for us. Ugh. Okay, but it that was a beautiful experience, and I do think you also. I don't know how much you've ever talked about how big of a struggle that video was because there was pushback both from like I feel like team and personal life 
because everyone was worried you were going to get pigeonholed as like queer artist and it was 2016 where there was a lot of like division there wasn't as much fluidity now there's so many artists that are like there wasn't that much fully mainstream and also like and i'm queer there wasn't that much representation especially in pop music Mm -mm. and so i remember i was like Oof, if I share this, this is this is a statement. Like this is a statement that I am making about myself. And there was there was there was a ton of fear around it. Of like, is this gonna go well? Are people gonna not listen to my music? Am I gonna alienate certain people? Am I gonna be pigeonholed in some way? And but it also was like it was the the foundational sort of platform that I was able to, yeah, really like free myself in mm-hmm. and also share that with other people yeah i also feel like being so honest and truthful is where most artists no matter what the what no matter what the truth is Mm -hmm. is where you actually like build fans that are like will stick with you forever yeah like the honest part of it that's where people are like okay now i'm i'm in with you you know so i think that was like a switch for you so much it was because before that i was just sort of like being vague and being like i'm singing about love (laughs) I love love. Here's a song what? about love. I feel like it just you weren't giving you didn't have like you Something had a story. You had yeah. a story and you had to not tell your story and then it's like classic. I feel like once you finally opened that door, it wasn't exactly like a floodgate because I feel like you took a lot. It was still very like you didn't go like to- yeah. You didn't go fully diving in. Mm-hmm. You were avoiding pronouns for a while i was avoiding a lot uh, of pronouns <laughs> a lot and then the time came and a time a point in time came where i was just like she her i love her yeah. she is so hot yep oh. okay <laughs> remember when i told you i was like i would have rather you put my social security number in a song than <laughs> than that title yep we'll get to that i think we're being back i think we're, we're flowing good. through it good yeah because it's like a time there is a timeline it's nice. This is so different, I feel, than some of the other episodes I've filmed because we have like a beginning, a middle, and an end. Yeah. Who, you and me? Me and you. Yeah. You and me. A beginning, uh, a middle, and an end. Yep. Yeah. We do. We have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Wow. So should we start at the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> what part is this? And now we are friends. Friends. Okay. Moving on. We'll get to that. We talked about also ways twirling to a crystal in my hand, just yes, so you know. I see that. Okay. Just trying to stay calm. Everyone else see that? She's got a crystal. It's gonna be okay. Okay, wasted youth. Then we basically went like mute with mm-hmm. each other. I mean we were around each other all the time. God damn. I gotta take my birth control. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> No, that would, have been the, that would be the biggest plot twist of the last four years. If I was secretly dating men, yeah, and you, <laughs> and I'm on birth control, yeah, that's not so what's going send, on. Don't yeah. worry, everyone. Um, okay, so we basically <laughs> just we basically like removed ourselves from the internet, except for that we were still together, and it was the time of like Snapchat and Instagram stories, and we were always with like Alex and posting with each other. But mm-hmm. I feel like we became like a trio of like friends. We never posted a kissing picture ever. Never. I, the, one of like the only pictures that we even the closest I ever got was like a photo booth picture where you can see that like you're kissing maybe somebody. Maybe our heads are getting close. I mean, it's me and you, and yeah. then at the end, it's like, what are they doing in that one? Oh, I know which one you're talking. You know about. what I'm talking about? Yeah. That's like the closest we got. We really. I can't believe we got away with it. Except for remember when friends would randomly accidentally post and we'd have to ask them to take it down. On our, like the internet doesn't even know that. I know. I know. And then I'll like on our birthday because mm-hmm. we have the same birthday. By the way. By the way. Which also, do you remember the day that we asked that we found out that each other ha- had the same birthday? Yep. That was a crazy moment. And you fell into a fire. <laughs> god wait there were omens everywhere. everywhere what the hell i did i why are we ignoring these things you're like that was adorable yeah the universe is like fell into a fire it's like get get away d- from don't each do other this. get away from each don't other don't do this yeah you felt and you had the worst bruise i've ever seen in my life on yeah, your like leg sp- spread all up my leg but mm-hmm. i yeah i found out i was like i forget who asked first i was like oh are you we, it's are you definitely pisces? started with pisces and yeah i was, I was like, like What's somebody says something about pisces i was like oh pisces i was like I'm a Pisces and you're like I'm a Pisces and I was like 
when's your birthday? And you were like, March. And I was like, mine's March. And then I was like, March what? And you were like, 19th. And I was like, my birthday's March 19th. It was creepy. And you know what? I wanted, my last girlfriend before you had a birthday similar to mine. And I was like, never doing that again. Thank God I can go move on, date someone with like a birthday not, because when you are so close together, then you have to celebrate with each other. Yeah. Which is fun. But then when you're like me and I'm usually the more laid back person in the couple that I'm in. And I'm lost. I'm just like, okay, so what are we doing for your birthday this year? Yeah, it stops being my birthday as much but we did a good job and also she did a fine job too I just was like it would be nice to have separate days to celebrate each other well, and then I met you and we had the exact same day no more Pisces no more March no, 19th no, girls we're not dating anymore but I had also dated Pisces so mm. no more March <laughs> yeah I guess yeah and then we basically pulled away from the internet then we started breaking up doing that on and off again thing mm-hmm <laughs> So then we were sharing even less, I feel, because I mm-hmm. felt I feel like we knew that the end was happening, like something it was going to end. You know, we, I stopped sharing even when we would reconnect with each other, like Instagram stories and stuff, because it was like we should. And that's why when we were quarantined together, we had that conversation where we were like, we have to do something to tell people that we are not together. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, we are going to spend the rest of our lives with people being like, are they together? Or are they not together? Like, how do you make a public breakup announcement when you never made a public dating, dating announcement. announcement but then we had to mm-hmm. we did not have to do what we did we did not have to way. do any of that <laughs> we weren't communicating anymore and stuff was still coming out and then it was like also processing actually being broken up at, at the same time and it was a stressful feeling i feel like that time of us not communicating is what like ended up being over the next like four years of just the the complete lack of um no talking yeah of no talking and just like so much ends up getting lost Mm -hmm. and so yeah i'm sorry that i'm sorry about i'm sorry about a lot but i'm sorry about that time that um that was all of that being shared wild decisions being made by both of us yeah obviously i'm it's i was a part of it but i think also you don't necessarily think about the the consequences of what all that does like for years and years after and then obviously like it's so weird to date an artist because then music gets written that comes out years later like Mm -hmm. years later where Mm -hmm. I'm like this stuff isn't even really relevant anymore but people who like listen to music don't think of that like they don't know they're like oh they must have wrote that they wrote that last month it's like yeah no there's been songs yeah songs could be like years old and then like end up seeing the light of day but then the feelings become relevant like not that the feelings become relevant but then those feelings like resurface especially if you're the person who's not the artist who didn't hear the songs first didn't know what was coming and then you're like oh oh Mm mm-hmm (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm getting well, I, stressed out yeah, i'm getting stressed out but it's all, it's okay like it's a, it's a it's a very real part of like what's been alive for both of us over the last couple of years and i think just as you know a songwriter it's like it's my outlet it's my catharsis it's like where i go to a space to like feel things and feel my feelings and then 99 percent of those songs like don't come out and then some some do and then some things you know, like uh, are unhinged and crazy and would maybe unrelease them if I could. <laughs> but also at the same time, it's just like songwriting, like my lifeline, you know, it's like, yeah. it's my therapy. Well, I also have to take responsibility because as a public person who now has a pod whole ass podcast where I'm talking for like an hour a week about things, I get, I get that there is like, there's a line between like sharing and being like a public person and like trying to respect people and making mistakes. Like I've made mistakes, I think too. Maybe not as big of ones as you, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, but obviously like I I have sympathy and empathy for you. Yeah. But, it's, also, it's learning. It's learning too. Yeah. You know, it's like we we fuck up and we're not perfect and we're yeah. creatives and we're feelers and we're sensitive and sometimes like things get pushed too far and taken too far yeah we'll get to that but <laughs> before that when i 
announced my <clears throat> podcast mm -hmm. did you get how, what, what did you feel were you scared when you saw that i was making one yes <laughs> i was terrified what what was the fear the fear was well it, it was i was like i have expressed so much and solely only expressed my viewpoint and my perspective that it is more than fair for Shannon to be able to like have her narrative and own her narrative and speak into whatever she wants to speak to so people can hear from her perspective. Mm -hmm. But I was also nervous about just like I'm sure you've been nervous of like, what the fuck is this song going to be? Or what is this lyric going to be? It's like you feel out of control of something. Mm -hmm. And so I think there was just a level of feeling like, and I don't even know this person any, I don't know you. Yeah. When you announced that and yeah, we can talk good. about the timeline, you know, of us even like speaking again, we hadn't spoken at all. Mm -hmm. And then I saw you announce that you were going to have a podcast, X's and O's. And I was like, fuck, <laughs> what the hell is she going to say? Is she uh. going to talk about just like stories? She's going to talk about our sex? Oh my God. I'm stoked that there was a moment in history and time that you, you had got to, be to feel scared. Out. I deserved that. Yeah. And honestly, I truly deserved to be stressed about what you were going to say. It was more than more than fair. <laughs> it was time. It was about time to taste my own medicine. <laughs> okay, well, I feel like that also points to just in general, like obviously I've said this on the podcast before, but a big part of why I started the podcast in in the first place was to have control of my own narrative again because I felt like super out of control like yeah. just between between things with you and music and songs but then mm -hmm. also my own relationship with social media and like kind of having moments of wanting to like disappear and not give people like access to me anymore but then the podcast was finally like I was like you know what I have so much I want to say and like I have lived a cool interesting life and also there's so much I care so much about representation still to this day obviously and there's not enough of it yeah so I was just like what am I doing if I like have the audience and they I have the stories I have the mm -hmm. stuff to do to talk about I'm like I deserve to so I guess that's and that's kind of also why I wanted you to come on the podcast and I am nervous about the reaction yeah. that it's going to get and I am nervous that having you here and I know I know our repertoire is that the right? <laughs> <laughs> I know that our vibe is going to come off as like lighthearted and friendly because that's the way that we are but I'm also like nervous that I don't want people to think that having you here means that I think that I stand by every decision that you've made like no. that it's a signing off of yeah like that I'm like yeah, everything that happened was really cool and good and I liked it and I feel good about it, mm -hmm. which is why <clears throat> I think it will be good to talk about candidly because yeah. up until this point, everyone's just decided what the truth was. So should we talk about it? <sighs> yeah. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Actually though? Yeah. Okay. Are you okay? I'm okay. Yeah. I mean, and we should also say that we have had a private conversation. We worked through a lot of stuff together having that conversation. Yes, we did. Well, because... And knowing we're on the same page is also why I felt comfortable having you on the podcast. Because yeah. I'm like, okay, it's not like we met up and you were like, I am Angel and did nothing wrong, you know? No, it, well, I think we also... it And it gives us a, an opportunity to like give context. Like, mm -hmm. it's not like we're just showing up here on your bed for the first time <laughs> hey. in four years and yeah. being like everything's fun and funny it's like yeah. we we did like a really deep dive of just the last four years and like spoke into everything really openly and really candidly mm -hmm. and yeah it's the the reason why i think we're even able to sit next to each other and have this conversation um let's do it <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm nervous I'm nervous too. This is like the worst part about it, obviously. That's okay. I think for us both to be able to say it's like we're we're nervous. Like we're nervous to do this. We both Yeah. I don't want to hurt anyone else's feelings either in talking about this. But I also want to respect myself and my own feelings that I obviously had <laughs> being so vague, but it's crazy because we're gonna be not vague. Right? <laughs> Let's get specific. <laughs> I also want you to 
and I said this when you and I met up like one-on-one but to just like give it all to me like tell me everything like tell me all the things that yeah you felt about everything that if you're angry with me if you're still angry with me yeah how you how you truly feel and like that I have that I want to hold the space for all of it Mm -hmm. and like fully 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 hear you Mm mm-hmm We should rate the songs that I have written about you. Yep. We're gonna. Okay. Are you ready? (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to hear us listen to the songs Carrie's written about me and rank them, you can find it all on my Patreon. It'll be in the link below the bio. The link will be in the bio below. Now you've got me not knowing how to say it. Uh, Love you guys so much. Thank you, Carrie. Thanks, Shan. Crazy. Crazy. Shout out again to Tomboy X for sponsoring this video. Nothing, nothing, nothing makes me happier than promoting queer owned companies. Finding underwear that makes me feel confident and comfortable at the same time has never been an easy task, especially as a tomboy myself. But the styles that Tomboy X carry actually genuinely make me feel so good about myself and I feel hot and sexy, but also very comfortable. I've been shopping in the boys section for what feels like forever now. And one area that always falls short is underwear, which I don't have that problem anymore thanks to Tomboy X. I'm obsessed with their boy shorts. They're so cute. The fit is amazing. And uh, yeah, they're really cute. Can't complain. Uh, I feel good about myself with them. If you want to pick out your own underwear or have matching boy shorts with me, you can go to www.tomboyx.com Shannon for 20% off the entire website.